So, you want to get into emulation, huh? It's an amazing world full of never-released games, games that are now playable in a new light, or technical hoops. Now, I'm making this video to introduce you all to emulation, pique the interest of those who have not yet taken the plunge, or help you get started. I'm V, the Pizza Boy, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to get into emulation. Now, before getting into emulation, I'm going to be telling you a couple of things that you need to keep in your mind. First things first, you need to get familiar with whatever device you're using. I know not everyone is extremely tech savvy or anything, but if you want to get into gaming with that device, especially PC gaming, you need to be aware of what you're working with. To check your hardware on Windows, all you have to do is hold the Alt, Control, and Delete keys at the same time. When this screen pops up, click Task Manager, and then click on the Performance tab. In the list, you'll see all of your important hardware for running games. You can skip this part if you built your own computer because I'm sure you're very intimately aware of your computer at this point. Kiss me, you fool. You need to have both a CPU, the computer processing unit, and a GPU, the graphics processing unit. To put it simply, for running 3D games, you're going to need a GPU. You don't necessarily need a super powerful one, but you do need one. Without it, you can probably only run 2D games, which isn't actually a bad thing considering how many 2D consoles there are. Now for the second thing to keep in mind. My game could run Enter Game Here, why can't it run emulators well? This line of thinking will get you nowhere when emulating for a simple reason. It doesn't matter if you can run Skyrim with Omega Super Duper graphics at 2000 frames per second, because what many people don't realize is that a PC game is a game specifically made to be played on the PC, while a GameCube game from 2003 is specifically designed to be played on a GameCube, not a PC. By emulating, you're doing something that the designers never intended. By saying this, I don't mean to push you away from emulation. I only say this to warn you that not every game will run perfectly, and that's just part of the experience. But most emulators are built really well and let you play games far beyond they were ever supposed to. Like the Dolphin emulator, which is pretty much one of the best emulators I have ever used, as well as the PPSSPP emulator. Now for the final thing, which many people use against emulation. Emulation is illegal, and by doing so, you are breaking the law. This sentence is pretty loaded, so we're gonna have to break it down. Firstly, no. Emulation is not illegal. There have been many lawsuits in the past trying to take down emulators, but they pretty much all have failed unless they were using stolen code from the developers of the games or systems. Emulation, in of itself, is illegal. The gray area of emulation comes down to actually obtaining the games. There are so many contradictions legally made by multiple companies, the worst of which probably being Nintendo. If you want to know more about the legal side of things and the history of emulation, I would recommend watching the video linked by Nero. To avoid getting into trouble, what many people do is actually buy legal copies of the game, then extract it to their computer for use on other platforms. To my knowledge, this is legal, so long as you're not uploading them anywhere on the internet or distributing your backed up copy to your friends. However, doing this takes a lot of special devices that would probably cost a lot of money, not even including the cost of the game itself. So, many people just resort to piracy. For legal reasons, I cannot encourage you to pirate games or tell you how to pirate games. All I can say is this. One, Google is your friend. Two, don't bother torrenting. And three, never download exe files. You will need a program to unpack .rar files like WinRAR or 7-zip, but reading the guides that come with those programs will help you out. Also, if you feel bad about downloading games off the internet, this is how I look at this. Let's take Fire Emblem Path of Radiance as an example. Despite being a pretty solid game, Path of Radiance did not sell well at all when it came out. Because of this, there is a very limited number of copies available and it sells for upwards of $300 on places like Amazon. The reason I would pirate the game in this case is because Nintendo and Intelligent Systems, the developer, would get none of that $300 you paid to get a secondhand copy. 
When games are sold into the market, they have a limited number printed in one time period before either being reprinted or never printed again. The distributor only gets the money for the initial sale at launch. After that, they get no money for resales. So, since Nintendo and Intelligent Systems gets none of the money if I was to buy an insanely overpriced game, then why should I buy the game at all? If there is no legal way to buy a new copy of the game, that is when I feel piracy should be used, as a last resort. There are a ton of games out there that are no longer available for sale for a multitude of reasons that can be played through emulation. Literally hundreds of games have only come out in Japan, and thanks to dedicated modders are now playable in other languages. There are a ton of possibility with emulators, and all I ask is that you give it a chance at least once. Every emulator that is still in development has forums, discords, and extremely welcoming communities. If you do decide to take the plunge, all I want to say is welcome. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'm still working on my three houses retrospective, but I just got some new hardware and if things went according to plan, this should be my first video in 4K. But anyways, please subscribe for more and thank you.